So we've gotten all the formulas and creation of those guys out of the way. Let's actually look at an example that you guys would be expected to do. So I'm asking you to discuss this guy here. We see it's got an x squared and a y squared, so it can be an ellipse or a hyperbola. We see both of them are positive, so we're pretty sure it's going to be an ellipse. We don't know if it opens this way or this way yet. We see this xy term. Okay, that's a guarantee right there that it's going to be rotated through something. So it's very difficult to complete the square when you have an x and a y term. So we know this is going to be the rotation thing. First thing we do is we go to this guy right here, and we say cotangent of 2 theta. Here's your a, here's your b, here's your c. We don't really care what the minus 10 is. So a minus c over b. Now I'm going to leave this guy right like that. It's positive, so I've got to be in quadrant 1 which always makes it nice. I don't do cotangents very well, so I'm going to do a tangent here. I know a tangent opposite over adjacent. That means this guy's got to be a 2. So if I get a square root of 3 over here, I know this guy has to be a 60 across from it. So I've basically just said 2 theta is 60 degrees. That means my theta is 30, that I'm going to rotate this guy through. There's the first piece we need to do. We lucked out in that it was in quadrant 1, it was positive, and also we didn't have to use our calculator. So in part 1 we talked about sometimes you may want to do inverse cosines here, but this guy is nice and neat in that we've seen these values before. Now we need to go to these two guys right here and literally go plug that theta in in all those spots. So I'm just following the formulas here. Sine and cosine switch places. Well, one's got a minus, one's got a plus between it. Once we get here, we're off to a good start. We have our theta. We have our rotation equations. The next step is to go to your yellow sheet and go plug in exact values for all these guys right here. So draw a triangle with 30 degrees and go plug in the cosine of 30. Go plug in the sine of 30. So that takes us to this guy right here. So these were all 30s. Okay, we've had this. They just went and plugged them in. Sine of 30 is 1 half. Cosine of 30, square root of 3 over 2, same thing down here. Now you should only have two different numbers when you do these. Uh, the sine should obviously be different. Now, we can say an x, let's get rid of this because we've already used it. And x is a square root of 3 over 2 x prime minus a 1 half y prime. We can say a y is a 1 half x prime plus square root of 3 over 2 y prime. Now the trick is to take these guys and go plug them back into the original equation. Now this is where the math gets a little ugly. Here's your x. Here's the y that we came up with. Here's the original equation. So it's going to be a substitution. This guy's going here and here. This guy's going there and there. And it is a lot of double distributing with some ugly numbers. That's why it's real important when you're doing cosine 30, you know, cosine 60, whatever, that you get exact numbers here and not decimals, because you don't want to be double distributing decimals. So you can see how I laid this out all nice and neat here. Okay, I'm going to switch over to a piece of paper here because it just doesn't fit uh, going horizontally here on Smart Notebook. What I would encourage you guys to do is set this guy up and start double distributing one at a time. So take these quantity squareds and split them up there and there. Take this quantity squared and split that guy up 
there and there as well. So I'm going to pause it here. Uh, you guys grab a sheet of paper, your notes, and see if you can start double distributing this. What I've done here is laid this guy all out nice and neat. They will take a lot of paper. They will take a lot of time. Um, I can't do the double distributing for you. I can only encourage you to be nice and neat and take your time with these. So I'll kind of pause it every step along the way here to save some time. We want to double distribute these guys first before you throw the two through it. And we want to double distribute these two guys first before you throw the square to three through. Okay, so do those guys uh, as the last piece. So I'm going to pause it here. You guys feel free to go ahead and double distribute these. But when you come into class, uh, don't let it be the first time you actually work through one of these. Okay, because they do take some time the first time through. Here's the results after the first round of double distributing. Uh, pause it here, make sure you're getting the same things. Notice, unlike when we do things we're used to, I'm not even combining these two together. It's really easy when it's like a 2x minus 1 and something else. But I'm just keeping these all as four things, and I haven't even distributed through yet. And we'll come back and we'll do that through in another round. And we'll pause it again here and simplify it further. This time through, I distributed the 2 all through here, squared a 3 all the way through here, and I did finally collect some like terms in here. You got a square root of 3 plus a square root of 3 gives you 2 square roots of 3. Fours stay the same because we're adding. So now I'm going to go through and color everything that's like terms. I got x prime squared. I got x prime y primes. I got y prime squared. I went and did the x prime y primes first because if we did everything right, those guys should cancel. The idea behind rotating is we can't graph an xy, so we need to put it in a coordinate system we can. So if those guys do not cancel on you, you did something wrong. So minus 4 fourths square root of 3, 2 square root of 3, 2 square root of 3 is those 4 square root of 3. Obviously, we could simplify the fractions. But no matter what, these guys will all just cancel right out of there. So now I'm going to go group the x prime squareds and the y prime squareds and see what happens. x prime squareds went to 10 fourths, which is 5 halves. So notice I didn't even reduce these. I just kept them all uh, in fourths and bumped this one half up. y prime squareds here in the blue rectangles. 2 fourths minus 3 fourths, 3 fourths, cancel, cancel, 1 half y prime squared. So what you have now we forgot about that minus 10, but we didn't need to do anything with it. Before, because there wasn't any substitution pieces. So now We're going to set this equal to 10. There's your ellipse on an x prime and a y prime axis. So what I'm going to do is take this entire thing, multiply by 2 to get rid of those fractions. Gets us to here. Divide by 20. And what you end up with is x prime squared over 4 plus a y prime squared over 20 equals 1. That's the ellipse we were hoping for when we started. Gets us to here. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of steps in there that we showed over in the paper. Now, this is an ellipse. a is 2. Well, I'm sorry. A would be square root of 20 here. So major axis is this guy. Minor axis is this guy. So it's a bigger number under the Y. So this guy is opening up on the Y axis by a square root of 20, or 2 square root of 5. Minor axis here is 2. We rotated this guy 30 degrees. So you can kind of approximate it there. And then we can find foci if we wanted and everything else. So there's kind of one example of how we're going to do these rotating things. Now, they can get more complicated, or they can be just about the same level. 
So when you come into class, please make sure you've looked through or you've done this and have this guy in your notes. Okay, go back, rewatch it, pause it, but you're not going to get these guys down by watching somebody else do them. It's super important that you're trying these on your own. Here's what the picture ends up with. Okay, bring questions you guys have and we'll see you in class.